Hey guys, I hope you guys are good. Um, greetings from inside the uh, Mountain Dew bottle this time. Um, like I said, I hope everybody's good. Um, I definitely hope you're staying warm. Um, Lord knows it's been uh, hard for me uh, to even move these last couple of days because of how bitterly cold it's been. I feel your pain if you have trouble dealing with the cold. Um, so just, uh, stay warm, guys. Um, I am here for you guys um, to do the second Mikey's Top 5. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to say um, a couple things. Um, number one, um, I'm going to do, after the Top 5, I'm going to do a... Um, Another Mikey's bookstore. Um, now, usually I will do two books per bookstore, kind of like my other videos. Um, five topics for muses, um, plus bonus topics, if I, plus a bonus top or two if I find one. Um, normally, two movies per Mikey goes to the movies if I have time. Um, and same things will apply to the bookstores. Normally, two books per bookstore. In this case, though, I'm going to do one book. Um, well, actually, I guess I can do two. Now, now that I think about it, I can do two. Um, so, scratch that. I'm gonna, it's going to be a two-book bookstore, um, which I think is going to work out better because I um, there's a lot of similarities between the two books now that I think about it. So, I can just do both. Um, and number two, I promised you when I started doing these videos full time that I would never intentionally flood you with videos. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever hit you with more than three videos a day. And if I'm hitting you with three videos a day, that means shit must hit the fan, something must be going on. Um, I'll never hit you with more than three videos a day. Um, but hit you with more than three, you might want to cancel Christmas, and you might want to send some buddy close to uh, check on me, because I may be losing my mind. Um, so with those little um, announcements made, um, we're going to go into a top five list here. And today we're going to cover... My top five tag teams in the sport of professional wrestling. And I didn't call it sports entertainment. I called it what it is. The sport of professional wrestling. My grandmother taught me to respect it. And I, damn it, she always said, call it a sport because that's what it is. Whether they want to admit it or not, that's what it is. Um, and so all the lessons my grandmother taught me when I was young, they live on through me. Um, now about this list, um, I realized when I was making this list that there's a lot more than five great tag teams that I've seen in my almost 30 years as a fan. So narrowing this down to five was very, very hard. Um, and I also realized that when I do this, um, you know, people are going to be like, what about these guys? What about these guys? What about these guys? And all valid points. Because um, there are so many great tag teams. Um, but tag, some tag teams that are indeed top five worthy will fall out of the top five just because of the wealth of tag team wrestling that I've seen in my 28 years of being a fan. Um... So, I'm not trying to slight anybody. Um, I'm going to do some honorable mentions at the end as well. Um, just so that, um, you know, some tag teams don't get slighted. But even if I do that, I know some tag teams are going to get slighted. Because there's just so much great tag team, uh, you know, there's so many great tag teams over the years that you're going to slight people no matter what you do. Um, 
So anyway, um, here is my um, top five wrestling tag teams. Um, number, I'm gonna go with uh, the Midnight Express. Um, that would be um, now the version that I have. There was two versions of them, actually three. Now that I think about it, there were three versions of. Uh, Midnight Express, Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, Bobby Eaton, Stan Lean, and I think Randy Rose, and like normal, I can't remember his last name, um, but I never saw those, uh, that normal and Randy's tag team, I only saw, um, Dennis and Bobby on, um, tapes that my grandmother had, um, and I only, and tag team, the version of the tag team that I've seen the most is, um, Stan and Bobby, and, you know, they, um, Bobby was a high flyer, Stan was a martial arts guy, and, you know, Stan and Jim Cornette, who was the manager, was the top, were the talker, Bobby never said much, um, never said anything, but, uh, he did his talk in the ring, and, you know, was just a great, great wrestler, um, you know, some of their matches with uh, Midnight and the Rock and Roll Express, and, you know, the Midnight and the Freebirds, and the Midnight and the Fantastics, which I'll get to the Fantastics in a little bit, um, which is off the charts. Um, and honestly, the reason why I got into tag team wrestling as heavy as I did is because of the matches that I saw between the Midnight Express and the Fantastics, Bobby Rogers and Tommy Ford. Tommy Rogers and Bobby Holden. Um, like I said, I'll talk about the uh, Fantastics here in a second. Um, so that's number five. That's the uh, Midnight Express. Uh, Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, and Jim Cornette as the manager. Uh, number four, I'm going to go with Harlem Heat, Stevie Ray, Booker T. Um, now, I have seen these two wrestle. Um, since they started in 1991 in um, the GWF, they used to air on ESPN. Um, I always thought they were a good tag team, but then when they got their break in 93 and uh, went into WCW, um, you know, they really stepped up their game. And, um, you know, <sighs> Booker T is the star that came out of that tag team, which is, you know, even Stevie Ray has said in interviews, you know, I always knew it was going to be that way. He was going to leave me behind and do other things. And, you know, Stevie Ray had a nice career after, you know, a hard week split. Um, but just nothing to the level that Booker T ever had. Um, but then together as a tag team was just some of the best matches I ever saw. Like, I saw matches between them and the Steiners in, like, 96 that just blew me away. And really, like, kind of, like, I knew of their greatness because I'd been watching them for so many years. But when they got in the ring with the Steiners, man, it was just magic. Um, and Booker T said it was, like, a uh, night off every night working with uh, Rick and Scott Steiner. So, um, Harlem Heat is my number four. Number three, we have the Fantastics. Uh, Fantastics are Tommy Rogers and Bobby Holden, the original Fantastics. Um. Tommy got hurt, and um, Bobby's brother Jackie took over uh, when Tommy got hurt. But um, the original Fantastics, the Fantastics were great. Um, you know, just uh, white meat, 80s, baby face tag team. Um, I first saw the Fantastics in World Class um, on my grandmother wrestling tapes, and then when I started watching the uh, um, wrestling on ESPN in, in uh, 1988, um, yeah, that's when I first saw the Fantastics, and those matches were like 85 or so, and um, I was like really, really impressed, um, great, great tag team, um, great timing, great high flyers, they could wrestle, they could sell like a motherfucker, they could, you know, just make anybody look good, and the matches again, uh, matches that made me get really deep into loving tag team wrestling was uh, Fantastics and Midnight Express um, on World Championship Wrestling. I um, can't remember the date. And I looked for the video of this. Uh, somebody posted it on Facebook the other, um, like a few 
months back, and I lost it. Um, because I want you guys to see the match I was talking about, but um, I lost it, so I do apologize. I'll try to find it, um, and I'll repost it on Facebook somewhere um, at some point. But uh, so the Fantastics are number three. Um, number two to me um, was the Steiner Brothers, um, circa from about. 1989 to 1996, I would think. Um, the Steiners were like the best tag team ever. They were WWE tag team champions twice or three times. I think it was twice. Um, they were NWA tag champions twice. They were WCW cha uh, tag champions like five times they were IWGP champions uh, like five or six times and um, you know um, it, they were cool because you know Rick was the dim-witted you know brute that um, when they first started anyway was the dim-witted brute that could would just run through you um, and Scott was more the you know the flyer and the you know the acrobat. Um, now, as um, as they uh, as Scott got bigger, they um, kind of switched roles, and you know, Rick was the um, wrestler type, the wrestler of the team, and then Scott just ran through people. Um, you know, the matches between um, them and Harlem Heat, like I said, in '96 or so, were awesome. Um, if you want to go back further, the matches between them and the Freebirds, and them and the um, um, and the Midnight Express, there again, Midnight Express, <laughs> um, which is awesome to watch. Um, so uh, they are number two, and my number one tag team in the top five tag teams. Um, I feel like it would be sacrilegious not to put these guys here just because um, they've done so much for tag team wrestling and paved the way um, for tag team wrestling. Um, and people still talk about them to this day. And that would be Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors. And I ain't talking about the WWE version of the Road Warriors either. I'm talking about the badass AWA, NWA, kick your ass, coming out with Paul Ellering to Iron Man and just. The shoulder pads, the face paint, that we're going to kick your ass, squashing guys in 30 seconds, and making it, you know, making it cool to do that. Um, but then again, you know, I saw, like, their matches with uh, the Freebirds, the Steiners. They had a couple matches with the Steiners in 89. Um, you know, they had um, matches with the Midnight, matches, like I said, the Freebirds. Um, you know, and, and they very good at being what they were, which was a straight-ahead power badass, kick your ass, take your name, and leave your land um, tag team. Um, there's a thing in the business as it's called when somebody gets a huge, huge, huge pop, like, um, you know, it's called a World Warriors pop because when they came out, place came unglued and um you know because iron man hit the shoulder pads paul ellering hawk and animal walking in like badasses and um so what's going to road warrior pop um i think jbl on monday um actually re renamed it instead of a um road warriors pop a daniel bryant pop because when he came out to do retirement he got that type of pop and for anybody that doesn't know what a pop is, it's like, it's a, like, it's a reaction from a crowd. Like, it's a, just a loud, loud reaction from a crowd. Like, if somebody does something, um, like, say, and Liz, you'll appreciate this. Say Dean Ambrose was ever to win the WWE title, which I think he will at some point. Um, you know, people would just go nuts. Um. And there would be, like, Road Warrior pops all over the place. So, Road Warriors are number one. 
So you got the Road Warriors, the Steiner Brothers, the Fantastics, Harlem Heat, and the Midnight Express. That's my top five wrestling tag teams. Um, honorable mention is going to go to Hardy's, Edge and Christian, um, Beer money um, should be on that list somewhere, but again, just so many great tag teams. So those are three that are going to get honor honorable mentions. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this one and upload it, and then I'll be back later uh, with a Mikey's Bookstore. Love y'all. Peace. And by all means, uh, let's talk about this, man. Tell me what's your top five tag teams ever um and you know let's have some good debate about this because uh like i said in the tease for this um this is sure to, sp to spurn some debate so let's do it let's do it peace to all y'all